you never lose by doing the right thing. And one of the worst things you can have is a guilty conscience looking in the mirror. I was born in Cincinnati on 6th Street Hill. My family consisted really of my parents, my aunt, my grandmother, who was the cook at the Sherman School. Our supper really was what was left over from lunch, as far as I can remember. He had a very interesting upbringing. His father worked his way all the way up to a significant position in the banking industry. His mother was a school teacher, and he's very proud of the school he went to, which was Douglas Elementary School, which was an all Afro-American school right here in Walnut Hills. He's very proud of the upbringing he had in, in the school. My teachers at Douglas School was really my super glue. They taught us to believe in ourselves. When I hit high school and didn't see somebody that looked like me anymore as a teacher, I was able to weather that storm. So I went to Central State and did janitorial work to work through college. Majored in chemistry, minored in mathematics. At that time, African Americans in medicine was more or less limited to Howard University, Mahari College of, of, of Medicine, and I was accepted at Howard. Medical school was a little bit of a scuffle for me. I was not as bright as a lot of the kids. There were probably a half dozen of my classmates who worked their way through medical school driving taxis. But I studied seven days a week and uh, did okay. Then he got a fellowship through his ophthalmologic training, Boston City Hospital, which was one of the better training facilities in the country. And then, like a good person, he did his time in the military. I went down just to watch an eye operation and fell in love with it. I remember when I was second year in residency, I was trying to refract a baby, nine months old, who was extremely nearsighted. And after I had finally decided what they should have, I put in a frame and put it on the baby's face. I took off the frame and the baby cried. That, that really means a lot. Doc Pryor is an eye doctor, and his thought and his focus should be on the eye. But darned if he's not telling people what to eat, talking about their lifestyle, he just covers everything. I think I lost a lot of patients because I meddled with them in general. You can't keep good eye health if your general health is poor. It's just that basic. I never saw a financial record with a medical record. Never. Would never do that. Because my job was to serve and to take care of somebody that's sick. It was not to me to make money. There's no such thing as a, a destitute position. I met my wife at a swimming pool. <laughs> She's been loyal. She's been a supporter. We had a little friction because I was working so many hours, wasn't at home, and I was really angry, me working hard, and she's fussing. I said, you don't like it? Come over and find out what I'm doing. I will. And so she started in the office. The downside is the fact that she fussed about me coming home at 6.30 and 7 o'clock. Once she got in control of the office, it was 7 o'clock and 7.30 and 8 o'clock because she really looked out after the patients. My wife's been in the nursing home there almost two years now because she has dementia, so I spend time with her every day. What's more important is family, his wife and his son and his many, many grandchildren. You would think that he's too busy to babysit, but no, Chester, are you coming? No, I've got to babysit. Dr. Taylor Asbury, who trained in San Francisco, came back and he rebuilt this department to what it is today. And so I've been a part of his team since 1962. I met him at one of the lectures I was giving to our student doctors. And I thought, what is this guy doing here? He's, you know, not a student doctor. After the lecture, he came up and said, oh, welcome to Cincinnati. And he was very supportive. And he said, you know, I'm in private practice, but 
you know, you're, you're never too old to learn new things. And he, for decades, would come to my student lectures and was probably, uh, had better attendance than some of the students. Medicine is such a vast entity that you really can't keep up with it. For that reason, going to resident lectures is really essential. We've established the Chester Pryor Lectureship and the lectures that will be given on an annual basis will be from experts around the world to perpetuate forever the patient as a person, uh, professionalism, and communication. If something's flattered me, uh, that's it. I handled racism by not participating in it, and I guess I did it because my parents may, taught me to believe in myself and not seek to get what others have. What I wanted to do, I set out to do, but never stepped on anybody to try to get there. I had no idea of his past accomplishments. He's not the kind of guy who's going to ever say anything about those things. Uh, and I just didn't know until I got educated and realized what a land breaker and barrier breaker he was. Most organizations he's in, he ends up like cream rising to the top. To give back to the community, I guess, is a form of gratification. It's a form of really being proud that I didn't forget from where I come from. I cannot think of anyone that deserves honors more than Dr. Chester does. He is a great living Cincinnati. He is icon in Cincinnati medicine. He's been role models to countless physicians, and I think his legacy and, and his beliefs are gonna live on in the Chester Pryor lectureship that we've created. I guess if I was going to make a contribution to medicine is the fact that I was able to persevere, was willing to be the test case so that this community actually realized that African Americans are very capable.